Hey guys, it's Quirky Turtle here, back with another Ember Knights video. In this video, I'm going to be doing an overview for the 1.0 update that just came out yesterday. And I'm going to talk about the main points of the update and some of the cool things that I see that they added. Now, starting with the Praxis fight and the new area. So, there's a final area that they added, which is the fifth area, and the boss is Praxis, which we all knew was coming. They changed the layouts of how Area 5 works. So, compared to all the other areas, there's a bunch of rooms that you have to complete, and then you go to a mini boss and shop and stuff like that. Area 5 is not like that. You have a choice of four different doors, and you choose two of them, or you need to choose two of them, and you go into a room, you complete that room. If you're lucky, there's only one room, but if you're unlucky, there could be up to three per portal. And once you complete that, you go to the next area, where you do that again, then you go fight Praxis, and then if you beat them, you end the run. Now moving on from the practice fight and the new area, onto the new weapon, which is called the Reaper's Toll. It's a scythe. I don't see a huge market for it in the speedrunning, but for casual players and people that just want to break the game, absolutely I see a uh, huge potential for it considering a lot of the weapon modifiers are catered towards crit and healing so you can definitely make a crazy crit heal build which will carry you now moving on okay so now let's talk about the new difficulty modifier system so there's still the difficulty modifiers that there was previously which is the move speed, the damage, the max HP, and the attack speed for enemies. You can still scale those up, but there's more difficulty modifiers, such as you start a run with 1 HP, or you can only have a max of 4 relics, or um, the 4 relics is 4 relic slots, not 4 relics total, which is a really cool challenge. And in multiplayer, there's one called Shared Damage and Healing. So when one person in that group takes damage, you all take damage. But if one person heals, then you all heal. It's a super cool challenge. It makes multiplayer a lot harder or easier, depending on how you're playing and what difficulty you're playing on. Now, I'm going to move on to Endless Looping. So they added Endless Looping, which was a highly recommended and fought for in the community because people just wanted Endless Looping so that runs could be longer and get more broken. Now I haven't played around with it, but there's been many people that have showed their inventories at the end of a run that they did, like 4 or 5 loops, and people are getting up to like 700 damage, a couple thousand HP. I think that's amazing. I really want to try a super long run. Just try to get as broken as possible. And you can get every single relic in the game. I thought at some points you would stop getting relics. But the devs have assured us that for every relic selector that you go to, you will absolutely get a relic. There is some relic or relics that will infinitely scale. I don't know what they are, but I'll definitely figure that out later on. So that's all about endless looping. I'm going to move on to boss variants. So we already have variants for mini bosses, and they went ahead and decided to add variants for bosses. I have not played with any of the boss variants. However, I've heard that many of them change the actual boss's playstyle and how their abilities and attacks work. It keeps the runs nice and fresh and it allows people to have different experiences through different runs. 
Now, I'm going to talk about some balancing and other things that they've added. So they've added 10 new rooms for each area. They adjusted the freeze status effect, added a max duration of multiple freezes to 5 seconds, added frozen enemies received increased damage, reduced the frozen duration when damaging a frozen enemy, reduced the frozen movement slow for bosses from 20% to 10%, Reduce the frozen attack rate slow for bosses from 15% to 10%. Now moving on to healing. They removed the white flash from the healing rooms. When you would use the entire healing fountain, it used to flashbang you. It does not do that anymore. I have tested it. It looks way better now. They reduced the overall healing in white spirit, which is the third area. They adjusted the visuals on the small healing prop in white spirit. They replaced the three apples in the room before the anvil boss, which is area four, with chicken. So there's now three chicken and one apple there, which is really good if you need healing before the boss fight. Moving on to the knight's charge adjustments, they increased the refresh count from 10 to 12, which not a big jump, but it's, it is a pretty big jump when you hear this next part. They reduced the charges from 2 to 1, which that's massive. They adjusted the damage from 5, 10, 15 to 10, 12, 15, which that's good. They buffed the damage on it. So those were the main changes in the 1.0 updates. Now I want to talk about the demon challenge that the developers has set up. The prize for it is you get to create a relic, however the developers obviously have the final say on it. So the challenge goes, you have to beat the max difficulty and you cannot buy relics at the start of a run. However, throughout the run, if you come across a shop, then you can buy relics there. This run or this challenge is incredibly difficult. I've only beaten the first mini boss. Some people have gotten to the end of area two. I don't see this being completed anytime soon, but I'm gonna keep trying. And I hope you guys attempt demon at least once, just for fun. Now that's the end of this video. I hope this information has helped you. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and I'll see you next time.